Good afternoon. Happy Sunday, everybody. I'm Robert. Welcome to another Cook Along Live. This has been running for 26 weeks. This will be episode 26. And that means that we've been doing this for six months. So the pandemic has uh, is basically what started this. And uh, because of that, I put this together to kind of keep friends and family and uh, other people that I know entertained and hopefully learning new things or at least diving into things that maybe they've never tried before uh, because I'm demoing how to do them. Within an hour, two hours, some of these are a little bit longer than others, but uh, just trying to kind of get people into something new, I guess. And um, since I'm good at cooking, I figured this is what I would do. So tonight we're going to be doing pasta carbonara. I'm using fettuccine. You can use pretty much whatever pasta you want. Um, and um, we're also going to be making some garlic bread. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing that we're actually going to do is get our oven on. So if you don't have that on yet, turn it up to 375 Fahrenheit. I'm not sure what that is in Celsius. You'll have to look up the conversion. And we're going to get started with our garlic bread. But before we get started with this, we're going to turn on our uh, pancetta. So I've already got it here in the pan. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be turning this on to low and just letting it start to cook and render all that fat out. We don't want to actually start getting it uh, burning it. So put it on put it on like a low heat, medium low heat, and just get it started. As far as the bread, I'm not going to be cooking this whole thing. It's just me eating tonight. So I'm going to size this appropriately. Let's say the end right here. And remember that we're going to have two sides of the loaf that we get to um, make. So you're going to have basically double the size that you start with. We went ahead and we cut the end piece off. The butt of the bread is off. I'm going to set it down like that and cut right down the middle as best I can, trying to keep it even on both sides. And that's good enough. And then the last thing I'm going to do is actually size these like so. And I'm going to cut 90% of the way through. I'm not going to cut all the way through. I'm just going to cut most of the way through like so. And you'll see that the knife goes almost all the way through, but not quite. And that way, when it comes out of the oven, you'll be able to tear these off into smaller pieces. And we're going to do that with both of these. The bread takes the longest to cook out of everything tonight, which is why we're getting started with it first. Go ahead and do the same on this side. There we go. And you should basically be able to kind of fold it open. Um, but not, it's not coming apart yet. We're just going to set those right there. Let me get these a little bit out of the way. And then we're going to get our garlic ready. I'm actually going to take, let's see, these two cloves right here. When I'm done with my bread knife, so I can actually set that aside. I'm going to get the skins off of the garlic cloves here. Easiest way to do that is to kind of put it with the, con you know, whatever side is concave or I guess, yeah, concave. We're gonna put that facing down and then we're just gonna lightly tap on it. And then you can actually just pretty much peel the skin right off. You don't wanna smash it, you don't wanna like obliterate it, but just giving it a nice little tap will actually loosen the skin from around the clove and then you can pretty much just peel it right off. How's everybody's week been going? You guys had a good one? Mine's been pretty busy. We've got a we've got a real estate convention thing coming up next week. And uh being one of the tech trainers for my company, I'm gonna be pretty busy with some of the new features that we're announcing. So I'm gonna have a lot going on next week, and this week was uh busy, busy getting ready for that. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna use our microplane grater to get our garlic nice and fine. And just mince it right into the butter. Careful with your grater. Mine's a little bit older, so it's not as sharp as it used to be, so I can run my fingers kind of on top of it. But if you have a brand new one or a newer one, um, just make sure you're not grating your finger into the butter. <laughs> Never a good look. All right, there we go. And then I'm going to just make sure that I get everything off from this side as well, or as much of it as I can anyway. There we go. 
And I'm going to go give this a quick rinse. And I'll be right back. And we're basically just going to mash this with the butter. Hopefully, you left the butter out so that it's nice and soft and easy to mix. If not, uh, you could probably toss it in the microwave for about 10 or 15 seconds on like the defroster setting. It usually works out better if you're just able to leave it out for an hour or so before you get started. It tends to tends to stay solid even though it gets super soft. And then it makes it nice and malleable and easy to work with. We're going to take our, our garlic and our butter and just kind of mix them together. Now the butter that I'm using is unsalted. So I'm actually going to add a pinch of salt to the butter and just kind of season it myself. I'm also going to add a little bit of pepper. There we go. And this way you can kind of control what the flavor is going to be. You get salted butter, I mean, it'll work, but if you want a little bit, uh, a little bit less salt in your garlic bread, this is how you would do that. And get that nice and mixed up. Scrape it off of our fork and then just give it a little, little taste. Nice and garlicky. If you taste it now, you'll notice the garlic flavor is very sharp. It's got a really nice bite to it. After we've put this in the oven and baked it, that is going to mellow out quite a bit. The garlic is actually going to start tasting a little bit sweeter as you cook out some of that, uh, some of that bite. So now we'll just grab a knife. Butter knife, scrape all the butter out of your fork. There we go. I'll just set him aside. Now we'll just spread this. And again, this being softened butter, kind of at room temperature, it's going to spread super, super easy. And you want a nice thin layer of this. You don't want to, you don't want to make it too thick. That'll actually make your garlic bread a little bit more soggy than, than you probably would want. But again, it's your garlic bread, so you can do whatever you really want. If you want a nice, light, toasty, garlicky flavor on the top, just a nice, even spread will work nicely. And you'll notice that as you're spreading it over this little crease here, this garlic is actually going to, or the butter is going to melt and kind of seep into there and give you a little bit of a bonus down the edges. Let's go ahead and do the same thing with this guy over here, and then we're going to toss this into the oven. And then by the time we're done with our pasta, the bread should also be either done or most of the way done. Hey! Good save, good save. Go ahead and get a nice light coating there, and then put a little bit more on the edge on this one. Awesome. I'll set that over here as well. Now, I'm going to put these on... I have a little um, cookie sheet, and then I am going to put them elevated, because what that'll do is it'll actually make the entire bread nice and crispy, and anything that drips off, as far as butter is concerned, isn't going to make the bottom of the bread soggy. It'll just... It'll just drip off, essentially. Um, I'm not putting a aluminum foil on this because butter doesn't have anything in it to make it sticky. So it's actually going to be pretty easy to clean it off if it drips off and gets onto the pan. So not too worried about it burning or making a mess. So I'm going to toss that right into my oven. And let that go. That'll be going for about 15 minutes. I got butter on my apron. I got butter on my cutting board. Let's go ahead and take a second to kind of clean some of this off. But that's why we wear an apron. All right, put you there. This I am done with. I'm going to go ahead and turn my pancetta up just a bit. And give this a nice little stir. You'll notice that the uh, oil, the fat is rendering out. That's exactly what we want. Uh, we don't want to get this too crispy yet. We want to make sure that we get a lot of oil in here first. And that's why we started this kind of uh, before we got everything else going, and we took the time to do our garlic bread. 
Now, one other thing you can do with the garlic bread if you want. Um, I didn't in this episode, just because I'm gonna have so much cheese in my pasta. You can definitely grate some of the Parmesan over the garlic bread and you'll get like a nice Parmesan garlic bread or the Pecorino, either way. Um, we're gonna have enough of that in our sauce for the pasta. I figured I wanted the bread to just kind of be its own garlic bread as opposed to adding the cheese to it. Um, next step really is we're just gonna take our cheese and kind of grate out equal parts Parmesan and equal parts Pecorino. And you'll notice that I did rinse off my microplane before I started this, so hopefully the uh, Parmesan won't taste too garlicky. And we want about two ounces of this, uh, two ounces of each. So you basically want to end up with about four ounces of cheese. Anything extra, you can drop down to your furry companion if you have one. And if you remember the last cook-along that we did pasta in, uh, I think it was episode two or three, it was one of the earlier ones, um, the cheese is actually going to melt with the water. There's no cream in this. So the cheese and the water and uh, the eggs that we're going to have are what create the sauce. No cream. Now I'm going to do something with mine today that I've heard gets a bad rap among people who like traditional uh, carbonara. I'm actually going to add a little bit of garlic to my uh, sauce here. I guess that's not traditional. So if you want to keep it super, super traditional, don't add any garlic. I happen to like the flavor of garlic, and I think, I think traditions can sometimes get people into trouble, get, uh, get uh, human beings into trouble. We put so much emphasis on not changing and not improving that uh, sometimes some pretty bad old things tend to carry forward. I like the flavor of garlic, and I think that it actually enhances the overall yumminess of this dish. So I'm gonna go ahead and add garlic. If you don't want to, don't, it's your choice. I'm not cooking your food. Totally up to you. Now, if you have both of these cheeses, if you have both Pecorino and Parmesan, go ahead and like cut off a little, little taster of each one and give it a try. You'll notice that the Pecorino is a lot more salty. It's almost got like a, like a very, I, I, I don't want to say sharp too many times because I already used it to describe the garlic, but it's got a sharper, salty flavor. And it's not so much nutty. It's just got that really, really salty kind of yumminess. The Parmesan has a much more nutty flavor. And I don't know very much about how they make the cheeses. I mean, I know they put them in the wheel and they um, age them, but I'm not sure why one is nutty. It might have something to do with the bacteria that ferment them, but again, I'm not a cheese expert. I just know how to use them, not necessarily how to make them. Hundred percent, Casper. All right, I'm gonna toss these back in the fridge. There we go. All right, so we got our pancetta here, rendering out nicely. I'm still going to keep this going at about a medium, medium low heat. You want it to be sizzling, but again, you don't want it to be getting too dark yet. You want to be get, rendering out most of the fat. We'll let that just kind of keep going. Mm -hmm. And now I'm going to get started with my drink because my kitchen is starting to get warm. I'm here in the beautiful state of California, where we have not seen the sun in about a week and a half due to the fires. So that's a lot of fun. I was actually considering doing um, fried rice tonight, because that's kind of all the rage on the internet right now. Um, the problem is, in order to do like a real, real good fried rice, you need a lot of heat. And I was going to do it outside of my barbecue, get a bunch of coals for a walk and, and really kind of like ramp up the experience. I didn't really want to go out and cook on hot coals in, you know, air quality index of 700. I think it's like 300 over where we're at right now. Yeah, doesn't, doesn't really sound like something that made a lot of sense. So I switched it up a bit, decided that carbonara might work a little bit better. Cool. So I want right now to grab a little bowl. Let's use one of these guys. Let's 
So what we're going to do is we're going to take two eggs, and we're going to use two whole eggs here. One, two, and then we're going to do two yolks, and that's why I got this little bowl here. Now the best way to do a yolk is to do it between your fingers, like so. And just let the uh, albumin or the white kind of strain through your fingers and roll the yolk back and forth before you move it back into wherever you're putting it. But you can also use the eggshell if you want. So when you kind of crack it open, crack it in half like this, let the white kind of roll out, and then roll the yolk between the two halves of the shell. Be gentle with it so you don't split it. So those are kind of... Uh, Two ways you can get just the yolk if a uh, recipe calls for that. I like using my fingers. It's easy enough to wash your hands after you're done. And then this I'm going to save for breakfast. And I didn't set up the sink can tonight, so give me a sec to wash my hands and get back over here. And then my towel has, you just flip it around so I don't butter my hands. Don't want anybody to call me Butterfingers. All right, we're gonna go ahead and just give this another stir. The oil has, and the fat has kind of rendered out, so this is great, looking awesome. What I'm gonna do now is just kind of kick up the heat a little bit, so back up to medium high. And then on this, I'm just going to go ahead and reuse my fork. Got a little bit of butter and garlic on it, but it's all good. We're not making traditional carbonara today. We're just going to go ahead and just spin your fork in a circle like this. And that's basically how you beat the eggs together. And just slowly speed up until you get the hang of it. Eventually you'll be able to go real quick. I really haven't gone outside very much, Jesse. It's been super hot here. Um, so I've been staying mostly inside. And now my pancetta is starting to kind of spit at me, so I'm just going to kind of give it a, a stir. And how do I not have 100 viewers per Twitch? I appreciate that, Caspro. Um, I, I don't promote myself enough. I just kind of do these. I'm very bad at doing the calls to action. It's uh, not natural for me to say, hey, if you like the content, hit the thumbs up button. If you really want to see more of this, subscribe to the channel. Like, I'm not good at that. So I rarely ever say it. I'm going to assume that's probably why I don't have uh, many more viewers. But I don't know, man. You know, if you want to share my content and you know people who are interested in cooking and aviation, I'm not going to say not to share my content. Um, and I'll actually put in a little bit of a focused effort to kind of try and get better at being purposeful about the uh, calls to action. And now my uh, pancetta is jumping out of my pan, so I'm going to turn down the heat. I'm going to do like a medium, medium, medium high. All right, so we got our eggs beaten. We're going to add all this cheese into the eggs and give it another stir. We're also going to add a pretty healthy dose of pepper. And this looks like a ton of cheese. I know. I'm not the one who uh, invented this dish. We're just going to get that stirred in with the yolk. And you'll notice that it is going to kind of, almost like a, when you wilt down spinach, this is going to very quickly kind of absorb into the egg. There we go. And it looks chunky and that's all fine. Like, don't worry too much about how this looks. And this is starting to get pretty crispy, so I'm actually going to turn it back down to medium and try to stop it cooking so it doesn't blacken on me, because you don't want it to blacken. But the nice crispy bacon bits, now that we've rendered out all of the fat, is perfect. We're going to add some uh, garlic to this. Like I said, if you, don't want to, if you want to make this more traditional, don't add any garlic, but I am going to add a little bit of garlic just because I like the flavor. And we want a pretty healthy amount of pepper in our eggs. There we go. Get that nice little stir as well. 
Mm-hmm. That's a good aroma. Fresh ground pepper. Alright, there we are. This has stopped cooking, but it is still kind of sizzling away, which is perfect. I'm going to go check my garlic bread real quick. See how that's doing. And while I'm over there, I've got a salted pot of boiling water going over there. We're going to go ahead and put our pasta into the, into the water. Now, you want to salt your water. And you want it to be salty. You don't want it to be salty to the point where you don't... Like, if you take a taste of it, you don't want to sit there and go, Ooh, ah, salty. Like, but you do want it to have a good flavor. The reason being... This pasta, fresh pasta, or even the dried pasta, has no flavor. It's, got, it's really bland. It's just wheat, uh, flour of some sort, semolina, or uh, you know, double zero flour, or whatever, whoever made it, made it out of. Um, you want to season it, because otherwise the sauce is going to be super tasty. But every time you take a bite of pasta, the amount of salt and the amount of flavoring that's in there is going to be dulled down by the fact that this has no flavor. So you want to kind of get them both nice and well seasoned. Um, so you want to salt your boiling water, whatever you're making your pasta with, to the point where, like, you can sip it and notice that it has a salty flavor, and it's pleasant. It's not like, like some people say salty is the sea. You don't want it that salty. You do want it to have a nice amount of salt, though. Does that make sense? Hopefully. All right, so I'm going to toss this into the, into the water. I'm going to give it about three minutes in here. And it's going to be three minutes once the water comes back up to a boil. And it looks like my garlic bread is looking delicious. And here we go. So since the pasta is not going to take very long, now is when I'm going to go ahead and crush my garlic and put it into the pan. Get that out of the way. We'll get our garlic here. We're going to do the same thing, just kind of lightly tap on it so that we can peel the skin off. Here we are. Sometimes it doesn't come off as easily as others, but it still should come off easier than if you didn't give it a little love tap to begin with. And we're going to do the same thing as we did with our um, garlic. We're just going to grate it right into the pan. And what that's going to do is it's going to create almost, it's going to melt into the oil and melt into the, um, the pasta and give it a nice subtle garlicky flavor. There we go. Go ahead and use our little knife here and scoop that in. Now you do want this to start sizzling a bit, so if your oil is not warm enough to sizzle the garlic, turn up your heat. You don't want to brown it, but you do want to give it a little bit of flavor. Go ahead and get that mixed in with everything. You'll notice that it's kind of disappearing into the bubbles, and that's exactly what you want. Now I'm going to turn this down to medium low. Awesome, awesome. Let's go grab our noodles and see what they look like. What do I want? I want this. Noodles are looking good. Sorry, I don't have the sink cam set up, but these guys are going to be done in another minute. While I'm waiting for those guys to totally finish, I'll pull my garlic bread out because it is totally done and it looks perfect. You guys can't see it because it's behind the... Uh, there we go. Yummy garlic bread. Let's see, where can I set it? Let me move my beer over here. I'll put the garlic bread out of the way. Garlic bread right there so you guys can take a look at that. Now again, if you wanted to, you could um, sprinkle that with Parmesan or a different kind of cheese. We're going to have plenty of cheese in our, in our sauce, so I'm not worried about that. Go ahead and kill the heat. And we're just going to go ahead and straight from the pan into, straight from the pot into the pan. And you do want some of the starchy water, so don't strain it completely. Go ahead and just go from one to the other. 
like so. Now the hot water and the oil in here, the fat, are going to emulsify. And when we pour the egg in and everything, that's what's going to create our sauce. It's going to be super nice and creamy and delicious. Get as much of that in there as we can. We'll get this out of the way. All right, heat's off on that. I'm going to go ahead and start stirring this around. Just kind of getting the pancetta incorporated, dropping some for your dog because he's been waiting all day. And then before it cools down too much, we're going to pour our egg mixture into here. And then you're going to give this a nice bit of stirring until the sauce becomes nice and creamy and coats everything. And we're going to turn off our heat. You don't want very much heat in the pan because then you'll end up with scrambled egg pasta. But you do want enough heat in the pan to cook the eggs and to make it kind of an emulsified sauce. So you'll see here, we're definitely getting the creamy cheese sauce. Uh, I'm smelling the garlic, but it's not super harsh. Very, very subtle. There we go. And use a combination of stirring with whatever you're using for your pasta, either a scooper like this or if you're using tongs. A combination of that plus shaking the pan sl uh, or sliding the pan around um, to keep the pasta kind of going. And there we go. Nice coated, delicious pasta carbonara. Now I'm going to let that sit for just a second. And while that sits, we're going to finish our garlic bread. I'm going to do this one. Get him over on the side. I've picked the leaves of a thing of parsley. And I'm just going to kind of bunch them up like so. Roll it up, almost like a cigar. And then my knife. Give it a nice little cut through. And you'll notice when I cut, I've got my fingers rolled backwards, and I'm actually cutting diagonal. If you look at my, my, my body position, I'm actually like at a 45 degree angle, and then that makes it that much easier to cut. And then I just use the knuckles to kind of hold my knife in position, and I can move it right through whatever you're cutting. It doesn't matter. Just always roll your fingers down like a claw, and use your upper knuckle as kind of a, a guard. And then you can really quickly just move through whatever it is that you're chopping up. Cool. And here I've got a nice little pile of parsley right on top of the garlic bread, make it nice and fresh. And another thing that some traditionalists might lynch me for, but that's okay, because I don't play by traditions, I play by my own rules. I'm going to use a ramen bowl, and I'm going to go ahead and scoop my carbonara into the ramen bowl like so. Make it look good. Nice creamy, yummy sauce. No scrambled eggs. And this is how I'm going to plate it. Get some of these pieces of pancetta mixed through a little bit. This is an incredibly quick um, dish to cook. It looks super impressive. It tastes amazing. And can definitely make it look fun in any kind of a plate. So this almost kind of looks like uh, one of the Thai curries that I did, except I'm using a, a bread over here instead of rice and uh, the pasta instead of the curry. But uh, here we go. Now, if you really want to, um, I might get yelled at for this, but you can put a little bit of your greenery on the pasta and then another little dusting of pepper, like so. And there we go. Pasta carbonara. Cook along live, number 26. Done. I'm going to go ahead and read through the comments and uh, catch up with y'all. I'm not going to turn off the stream immediately today, but I did want to show you how quick and easy this one is. It's a lot of fun to make, and it's very impressive for somebody who um, maybe you're having over for dinner and you want to spend more time talking to them, like a date maybe. Uh, I know we're not doing so much of that right now in this climate, but this is a perfect dish because you can throw it together, it impresses, and um, it's delicious. Let me go ahead and uh, scroll back here in the chat and see what y'all said. Do 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 do. Outdoor cooking? Nope. Hey Athena, how's it going? If you're still here, hi. 
trying to come up with names for my channel, the Compliant Flying and Cooking. Well, I'm planning on, once we're able to kind of go out, doing almost like a diner's drive-ins and dives, where I go fly to the restaurants at various airports and do kind of a Guy Fieri thing and, and uh, go taste the food and kind of talk about it. That's kind of where I see this going, because these are kind of two of my biggest passions ever. So, Mile High Meals, I like it. Simmering Simulators. Yeah, that's also a good one, for sure. Thank you, Robin. A lot of black pepper, 100%. Uh, deep flied. <laughs> I love that. That's awesome. Cooking in the clouds or learning cooking in the clouds. Sure. Hmm. Appetites at altitude. These are all really good suggestions. I'm actually going to come over and write some of these down. Culinary cockpit. Thank you, Athena. Thank you, Annika. Yes, it's... Uh, it's not super, like, I'm right in the middle. There's a bunch of stuff going on up kind of in northern, northern California. We're the Bay Area right here. And then there's a bunch of stuff happening right below us in, like, the Fremont kind of South Bay Area. And then all of Southern California. So this whole state is on fire. And this is about a month or two ahead of, like, the usual fire season. So we're, we're getting an early start. Uh, hopefully it just starts and ends and we don't have our normal fire season. But, uh, yeah, it's not, not ideal at the moment. Dinners and dive bombs. Ooh, good one. Nice. How was Montana? And I'm going to go ahead and take my Instagram glory shot here. And then I'll take a bite and let you all know what I think. So if you guys like my content, let me go ahead and do that since uh, it was mentioned. If you guys like my content, by all means, hit the thumbs up button. Feel free to subscribe to the YouTube channel if you like stuff, uh, cooking, aviation, things of, the, of that nature. Um, you can also find me on Instagram. You can find me on Twitter. I don't really post much on Twitter, but you can find me there. Instagram, twitch.tv if you like gaming. Uh, I do some live streams there as well. Uh, but I do it on, on all three all, all the time. So you'll see me on whichever one you want to follow me on. That looks good. And you can find me either by looking up my name, so you guys know what my name is if you're watching right now, uh, on Instagram or Twitch or YouTube, or you can look up Cyrix, P-S-Y-R-I-X-X. -X. You can find me pretty much anywhere on the internet under that name. I think Tumblr, somebody got, somebody got that name before I did, but they, don't, they haven't posted anything, so it probably was me, and then I forgot what the password was, which is not like me, but who knows. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is delicious pasta. That is really good. The sauce is nice and creamy. Coating the mouth. Definitely got that salt from the pecorino. Maybe a little bit too much salt, but that's going to be... That's probably going to be from a little bit too much pecorino. But... You know, I think that's how this is supposed to be enjoyed. <clears throat> and the pancetta is also pretty salty. Mm-hmm. Not salty enough that I, I don't enjoy it, just maybe a little bit too much salt. But this is delicious. Mm. Well, I hope you guys give this a try. It's always been, I mean, it's, it's always fun to get together and cook with you guys. Next week, I'm planning on doing pizza. And the way that I'm going to be doing pizza is we have to make the dough ahead of time. So I think what I'm going to do is maybe Friday night put together a pre-made video for dough and then post it on YouTube and Facebook. And uh, I guess I can't post it on Twitch, so maybe I'll live stream what I'm doing on Twitch and then post it to the other two places in kind of an edited down format, maybe. I don't know. Um, and then it'll be your responsibility to have that dough made by Sunday. Uh, it does take kind of an overnight rest to really kind of develop and, be, you know, do its rise thing. So that's probably what I'll end up doing. And then what we'll do on Sunday is we'll actually have the dough ready to go. I'm a poet and I didn't even know it. And then we will, you know, roll it out. Uh, we'll make our sauce. We'll roll out the dough and we'll uh, set our pizzas up and get them cooking. That's going to take a oven that goes really high. Um, if you want to be super... And I do... I do um, the thin crust style pizzas. So those are my favorite because I like the crunchy kind of crust. You basically want to get your oven as hot as you can get it. 
So if it goes up to 550 Fahrenheit, I'm not sure what that is in Celsius, but I'm pretty sure it's warm. Um, you really want it to get hot. And uh, if you have a pizza stone or something like that, all the better. Um, if not, you can still make it. It'll still taste great. It just won't be as, as crispy or crunchy or cook as fast. Because uh, traditional pizza is supposed to just go like that and be done. Um, but we're going to try that. Because for Thanksgiving, I really do want to do maybe an all-day kind of cook-along. And uh, eventually, I want to do kind of like longer form cook-along lives. And I want to try and do some testing about logistics on how to make that possible. Because, for example, some things like the pizza crust, pizza takes about a day to make as far as the dough is concerned. But I don't want to keep a stream on for a day. I don't think anybody would be interested in that. But maybe putting together kind of the prerequisites in a produced video and then doing the actual cook-along live with those ingredients that you've made may be a great way to kind of make that work. So I hope you guys all have an excellent Sunday afternoon. I do hope you give this a try. Follow me on Instagram. Um, tag me if you guys make this and post it on, the, on, on your feed. I would love to see what you guys are able to do on Facebook. Uh, my name, just look me up by my name. Um, send me a friend request. Also send me a message and just say, hey, you know, love the cook-alongs or something like that because I don't, I don't friend people that I don't know or I don't know where you're coming from because I get a lot, of, a lot of spammers. So anyway, hope you guys have a great Sunday night and um, we'll see you next week, hopefully for pizza. Have a good one, everybody. Bye.